Time for your morning update here on Friday at SDH. A lot going on in and around the world. We'll start with all the transfer news going on over in Europe. Checking in on some of the big names. Obviously, you're looking at uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. You're looking at uh, Raheem Sterling. You're looking at Frankie De Jong. And it looks like there is an added complication now, according to Kevin Hatcher at Sky, where Frankie De Jong is concerned joining Manchester United. And De Jong has said that Barcelona is his dream club. That's who he wants to play for and might take a, a little bit more than what a lot of folks were originally anticipating to bring Frankie De Jong from Barca to Manchester United. The latest complication, according to Hatcher, to the wage, wage situation as he deferred some of the wages to help Barca in the pandemic. And now Barca are saying if you want the move to go through, the move that you didn't want initially, he'd have to forego a lot of the money that he set aside. And, and uh, Hatchard says he's not sure he's entirely comfortable with that. But he is confident Dijon will end up at Manchester United in the end. But they're waiting on Barca as if they do get the money from selling the TV rights. Xavi could be the driving force in negotiations. So we'll keep an eye on that one as well. Pepe Reina has returned to Villarreal 17 years after leaving the club to join Liverpool. One-year deal after leaving Lazio, where he'd been playing since 2020. So very cool for uh, careers to come full circle in a situation like Pepe Reina's. Chelsea have, out, have now held talks with Manchester City over a deal to re-sign their former academy star Nathan Ake. Ake is one of the two City players Chelsea want to sign along with Raheem Sterling. The Sterling deal... Close to being finalized, the Ake deal understood to be at a less advanced stage right now. Ake left Chelsea for Bournemouth back in 2017 after an initial loan spell before the £40 million move to City two years ago. Uh, Stephen Reid has announced he's leaving his role as a first-team coach under Steve Cooper at Nottingham Forest. Posted a rather uh, three-paragraph note to his social media platforms. Jack Wilshire has officially retired at the age of 30. Uh, with uh, all of the the injury problems that he's had. I know a lot of folks remember him from his time uh, to Arsenal. So uh, Jack, Jack, Gre- uh, Jack Wilshire hanging him up at the age of 30. Uh, also on the board this morning, you look at the, uh, the, the newspaper and uh, the newspaper news. Uh, of course, newspaper news from the Department of Redundancy Department. Nicely done. Daily Express says that uh, Manchester United edging closer to the double signing of Lissandro Martinez and Anthony from Ajax, both players keen on the move to Old Trafford. Uh, Nabi Keita and Diogo Jota next in line for new Liverpool contracts after Joe Gomez got his uh, new contract uh, yesterday. Uh, Manchester United have joined Ajax in the race to sign striker Brian Brabby from RB Leipzig. We'll keep an eye on that one as well. Uh, Eric Ten Hag has introduced a series of hardline measures to bring back unity and discipline at Manchester United. Players warned they will be exiled for leaking information and dropped if they're late for training or team meetings. So it's the Tom Coughlin philosophy for Eric Ten Hag. If you're five minutes early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you may as well not even bother showing up. So that will be interesting to see how this continues to develop with Eric Ten Hag at Manchester United. Uh, Leeds prepared to pay a club record £31.5 million pounds to sign Belgium striker Charles de Ketelaer. We'll keep an eye on that one. Nottingham Forest poised to land Nico Williams and Omar Richards in a £25 million pound plus double fullback swoop, as it was referred to by the Express. And Stephen Fletcher heading back to his native Scotland to join Dundee United. Uh, other news in the uh, world of uh, soccer. CONCACAF W, USA in Jamaica. USA with a 5-0 win. Sophia Smith in the third and the eighth, so she got her brace. Rose Lavelle in the 59th. Christy Mewis a penalty. Trinity Rodman in the 86th. Uh, You now have a team that has uh, qualified for the World Cup in 2023. So uh, good news there. Once again, not taking anything for granted when it comes to uh, the U.S. and the, the women's game. So... They have now clinched a berth in the 2023 World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. The USA's second win combined with Haiti's surprise 3-0 win over Mexico assured the Americans of a top-two spot in Group A. So uh, that will continue to to roll on when it comes to uh, the CONCACAF W tournament. We'll keep an eye on that one going forward and uh, see see what's going on there. Oh, uh, Luca De La Torre has now moved to uh, Celta de Vigo and for a $2 million price tag. So uh, good news if you're following along with uh, the U.S. men's national team 
that uh, another U.S. player that a lot of folks have been uh, looking at and now gets a $2 million move to his new club. So we'll keep an eye on, on any other player movements there as well. Other news in Europe, Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo is going to miss the Manchester United preseason tour, and the team is going to look uh, now they're going to listen for offers. Uh, he was training in, Portu- in Portugal to get ready for the season, and he's been granted additional time off to deal with a family issue and will not join Eric Ten Hag and the squad on their tour of Thailand and Australia. Uh, it is official at Leeds. Uh, the Sinistera signing from uh, Feyenoord for in the neighborhood of 25 million pounds. That one is official. Tyler Adams signing is official for Leeds as well. Steven Bergwijn has been signed by Ajax from Spurs for just over 26 million pounds. So uh, Steven Bergwijn moves on to Ajax as, as he continues uh, his activity there in European soccer. Yafet Tanganga will be made available for a loan once Clem Longlaw completes his move from Barcelona to Tottenham, it looks like Bournemouth are interested in picking up Tanganga for a loan going forward. Kevin Hatchard was asked also uh, over at Sky about the Robert Lewandowski situation. Uh, Lewandowski, we all know, wants to go to Barca. It's made that clear in public. Hatchard says that Bayern would rather keep him for the final year of the contract, but if they are to let him go, it's going to be on their terms. German media talking about a 50 million euro starting point. Uh, Barca haven't gotten near that yet. What they need to do, once again, is generate more funds. We've talked about the TV rights deal that uh, has been working its way to where can free up some more funds for Barcelona so they can get some more activity done. And so we'll keep an eye on that one as well. Uh, Aaron Hickey has completed medical tests this week, and now he's set to be announced as a new Brentford player. Hickey signed until June 2027, according to Fabrizio Romano. 22 million euro add-ons included uh, to Bologna. Liga MX is uh, working there week two of the uh, Apertura coming up this weekend. Three matches on your Friday night. One at 8 o'clock Eastern, two at 10.05. And then you have uh, activity on Saturday and Sunday. Mazatlan and Tigres is your early match. And Tigres... Go to the Kraken as a minus 102. Mazatlan is a plus 278. Your draw is a plus 245. 10.05 Eastern, Tijuana and Suarez. Tijuana is a favorite at minus 106. Uh, so Cholos, a big favorite at home against FC Juarez, who got a point last time out against Chivas on the road. That was a big point for Juarez to start the apertura. Puebla is a plus 127. As Santos Laguna visits, Santos Laguna is a plus 204. On Saturday night, it is 2 at 8 o'clock, 2 at 10 o'clock Eastern. Leon and Pumas. Leon is a minus 108. Big favorite over Pumas, basically a plus 290. Chivas at home against Atletico San Luis. Can they do better against ASL than they did against Juarez? Another opportunity for Chivas to get full points. Can they capitalize at a minus 102 once again? And your number is a plus 300, basically, for Atletico San Luis. The two 10.05s. Cruz Azul is a plus 145 hosting Pachuca, who's basically a plus 200. Monterrey is a plus 129, as Club America is a plus 217. Toluca gets the uh, afternoon special on Sunday at uh, Estadio Nemesio Diaz. They're hosting Atlas. They are a home dog at a plus 192. Atlas is a plus 144. And the night game in the Apertura is at 6 o'clock Eastern, Caretero and Nacaxa. Caretero is a plus 139, and Nacaxa is a plus 200. Copa Sudamericana results in the playoffs. Lanús and Independiente del Valle, uh, goalless draw at a plus 225. Sao Paulo over Universidad Católica by the score of 4-1 is a big favorite, and uh, Atletico in penalties over Olimpia Asuncion by the score of 3-0. Scores in the Copa Libertadores. Action doesn't kick back in until the playoffs on August the 2nd. One match yesterday, Estudiantes over Fortaleza by the score of 3-0. The Women's Euro Tournament is going on this weekend in full. It's two games per day now. One at noon Eastern, one at 3 o'clock Eastern. Yesterday, meaning Thursday, you had the one result, Norway over Northern Ireland. They were a big favorite at a minus 14.29. They won by the score of 4-1. But Northern Ireland got to score their first goal in the competition's history. So a big moment for them in Northern Ireland. Very cool moment to see. 
Uh, Jen Hildreth, I believe, was on the call for that one for uh, ESPN. On your Friday, it is Spain and Finland. Spain, a big favorite at a minus 1429. Finland, a plus 24 and a quarter. Three o'clock, Germany over, uh, is favored over Denmark. Germany right now is a minus 179. Denmark is a plus 458. On Saturday, Portugal and Switzerland. Switzerland is a minus 110. Portugal is a, minus, uh, is a plus 269. Netherlands and Sweden is the back end of the doubleheader at uh, a plus 175 going up against Sweden. Sweden a plus 159. Your draws a plus 211. And on your Sunday at noon, Belgium plus 147 going up against Iceland at a plus 172. Your draws a plus 231. France and Italy is 3 o'clock, the second match of the doubleheader on Sunday. France a minus 200. And the draw is a plus 319. Italy is a plus 490. Right now, just standings, and this is really quick because only two matches have been played so far. In Group A, Norway has the one win on the board. They've got better goal difference, plus 3, 2, plus 1 over England. Austria losing to England 1-0 in the Northern Ireland match we talked about. Going through the groups, the other groups very quickly, it is Group B, Germany, Denmark, Finland, Spain. Group C has Sweden, Portugal, the Netherlands, and Switzerland. And Group D is Iceland, France, Italy, and Belgium. So if you are uh, in a position to to check out the the women's Euros, uh, please do so on the ESPN family of networks. Two matches in CONCACAF W tonight. Trinidad, Tobago, and Costa Rica. Costa Rica is a big favorite at 7 o'clock Eastern at a minus 526. An even larger favorite, Canada tonight, going up against Panama. Canada a minus 10,000 on the board. Panama is a plus 3,000 on the board. Standings right now with the eight teams. Uh, USA, Haiti, Jamaica, and Mexico. And Mexico having lost their first two, they are in a world of hurt right now. USA, six points, two wins, eight goals. They haven't allowed one. Haiti and Jamaica right now. Uh, Haiti, even on goal difference, Jamaica is at a minus four. Group B, that's your action that's going on next. Canada, Costa Rica, Panama, Trinidad, and Tobago. Canada beat Trinidad and Tobago first time out, 6-0. Costa Rica beat Panama by the score of 3-0. A lot of action going on in USL Championship coming up on your Saturday. And... It is Tampa Bay, a minus 127 against Hartford Athletic at a plus 278. Indy 11 at home, a minus 122 at the mic up against Detroit City. Pittsburgh, a plus 102 with uh, the Miami FC traveling to Highmark. The Miami FC is a plus 231. 8 o'clock Eastern, Birmingham, a road favorite in Charleston at a plus 125. Connor Casey and the Battery are a plus 211. Loose City, big favorite, no surprise, against Red Bulls 2 at a minus 417. Red Bulls 2, north of plus 800. FC Tulsa and Atlanta United 2. FC Tulsa, minus 182. Atlanta United 2, a plus 376. 830, Memphis and Phoenix Rising. This will be an interesting matchup. Memphis 901, a plus 159. Phoenix Rising, a plus 140. Your draws, a plus 250. And at 9 o'clock Eastern, New Mexico and RGV. New Mexico United at the lab is a minus 143. Your draws a plus 292. RGV is a plus 323. League One, one matchup on Friday. Friday night, Charlotte at uh, American Legion is hosting the Richmond Kickers. Richmond Kickers are a road dog, almost at a plus 200. Charlotte Independence is a plus 108. Three matches on your Saturday. Greenville, big favorite at home at Legacy Early, hosting Central Valley Fuego as a minus 123. CVF is basically a plus 300. Union Omaha on the road to Cary, North Carolina, taking on uh, North Carolina FC. Union Omaha, the Murder Owls, a minus 102. North Carolina is a plus 243. Your draws a plus 239. Tormenta and Red Wolves in Statesboro, 730 Saturday night. This one will be big. Tormenta, a plus 145. Your draws a plus 211. And the Red Wolves are a plus 174. Another couple of notes from some of our friends here. Uh, Fabrizio Romano, AS Roma, considering to make a move for Wilfred Zaha. No official bid yet, really appreciated by the club board and Jose Mourinho. No discussions opened with Crystal Palace, still in the early stages, and the option is now being considered internally. Southampton have now opened talks about, uh, to sign Issa Kabore on loan for Manchester City, attracting a lot of interest. Nottingham Forest had a £17 million bid turned down. Southampton is now leading the race, and so he'd follow uh, Lavia and soon Joe Aribo at Southampton. 
uh, AC Milan pushing once again. We talked about the De Ketelaer deal, progressing both on player and club sides. Uh, he wants Milan as a priority over Premier League clubs. New contacts are ongoing between Milan and Bruges. De Ketelaer and Zayic, main, uh, Hakim Zayic, are the main AC Milan targets. Uh, Ren have made an official proposal around 10 million euro to Benfica for Brazilian center back Morato. Deals considered not easy as the price tag is too high. Benfica have doubts about Umtiti, and we'll discuss with Ren from Morato in the coming days. So keep an eye on that one as well. Once again, with uh, Fabrizio Romano leading the charge on that one. Rodrigo's announced he's set to sign a new contract with Real Madrid, and uh, the new contract valid until 2028. The release clause. A billion euro, of course. And so we'll wrap it up with the, the one question that's uh, on the board. And it came from uh, OMR Senior 61. Uh, would anyone be surprised if Brad Gazan announced his retirement too? If Gazan retired, I think he would make a good addition to them, to the team as a coach. Uh, I don't think he will announce a, a retirement as well. I think that Brad, knowing Brad, and the fact and the conversation once again with Emilio and Jared on the timeline too has been really cool. Uh, the way that I'm looking at it with with Brad is Brad is going to give himself every opportunity to come back because that's in his DNA. And so, if once the comeback starts, if if he's not happy with it, then obviously, I think Brad would Brad would not be happy being a hundred percent. Uh, back fully recovered and trying to to be there for his club. So I think that Brad will give himself every opportunity to come back, and I think that that's just who he is. I think that at some point, if Brad wants to go into the booth and be a broadcaster, as he was for the Pachuca match on uh, on Bally, I think that that's also there for him as well. But we also know that, yeah, if, if Brad wants to, to give back in any way to the game that he feels he can, then he most certainly will. But I think that Brad will put everything he can – into recovering from injury and coming back and being a part of uh, the club here at, at Atlanta United. So once again, thanks to to uh, OMR Senior 61, Emilio and Jarrett, for catching us up on the timeline for that one question. Remember, once again, Atlanta United and Austin, that one is – it's not a, a goofy long pregame show or anything like that. So it's going to be a 7.08 kick, 7 o'clock. If you'd like to be in a climate-controlled environment to give your support to the guys is there in the second half of the season – uh, out of a playoff spot right now, but still definitely within reach with a lot of matches to go. Uh, Atlanta right now at 20 points, New England at 25, and this is an opportunity for Atlanta United to get something done at home to close that gap uh, as we start the second half of the season. It'll be great to uh, hear Mike and Jason. 6.30 will be the start of uh, the pregame show and an hour of post-game after on 92.9 The Game and the Odyssey app. And it'll be uh, Kevin Moe and Jillian on Valley Sports South. Once again, their pregame show starting at 6.30, kickoff at 7.08. Thanks for everyone who has been a part this week of everything here at uh, SDH. And thanks to all of you for being a part of it as well. Once again, kickoff coffee, kickoffcoffeeco.com, on the Bird app, on Facebook, and on Instagram. Soccer down here, 15 for getting your special discount, but remember 10% of the proceeds from all of the purchases that you make go to help youth development for the sport of soccer. So very, very cool with our friends at Kickoff Coffee. Very, very cool for those of you who have invested in Kickoff Coffee for your wake-up or just to have a cup of coffee whenever you like. So for everybody here at SDH, that's your morning uh, look at things as we get ready for a very busy weekend in the world of soccer. Play it safe, everybody. Mucha plata, y'all.